Yeah, this is very sacred ground here in Beaver. It's sacred ground for both parties of people, white settlers and Indians. And today we're going to focus on the Indians because, well, I think we know some of the parts of the history here, but we certainly don't know it all. And my, my emphasis today is I want to show you, I want to reveal to you just how serious this negotiation that took place right here on these grounds, how important it was, and what manifested as a result of that. Okay, there's a big bulldozer coming every time I make a video. I've always got to have noisy things happening to me. But that's okay, you know. It's, it's such a pleasure to be out here. It's, the cool weather is finally upon us. And Pennsylvania is dressing in its autumn attire. And I'm very happy about that. It's my favorite time of the year. Here are the commanders of the forts. Let's go up here. There's some Indian stuff here for you. But I'm going to read some things about Fort McIntosh that uh, probably a lot of you don't know. I've made videos of this location before I know that. I'm not repeating myself. This is at a different video. This is something that I want to make known to you guys. There's the archaeological excavation that took place in the 70s. Here's at the frontier. Blah, blah, blah. Um, these were put here years later, of course. This is just one piece, guys. The, picture, I want you to picture it this way. This is one piece of a puzzle. Here in the Ohio Valley, okay, which is where we're at, and this is my area of expertise, this is just one piece. Out further west, this development continued. It continued to go on. It continued to expand. It continued to grow more bloody, more violent. Unlimited amounts of avarice was just all over the place. And, man, there's people everywhere today. I'm trying to make a video here. And, um, you know, what I want to focus on is these concluding terms for the Chippewa Indians, Winnedote, Delaware, the Chippewa Indians. The Treaty of Fort McIntosh, wow, that was scary. The Treaty of Fort McIntosh was more of a list of demands than it was a compromise. These Indians were forced to give up territories that one, they didn't want to give up, and two, a lot of the territories that these Indians were giving up, they weren't even here in this little assembly here to even conclude those terms. It was just taken away from them. This was not a 100% uh, agreed upon ensemble. It was just not. It never was. It was, it, it was hoodwinked. It was manifested that way. It was done on purpose. It wasn't uh, an honest act of negotiations whatsoever. In fact, there, there's just no way that you could even fathom that. But I want to read you something, okay? I'm going to read you something. I'm going to read you a couple of excerpts here. This is the nice marker that they have here for the birthplace of the United States Army. First American Regiment, 1778-1788. Northern Boundary of Fort McIntosh. And we all know its significance. We, all, you know, I, I've done my website with this, and you know, I've uh, wrote about this. I've included articles, and there's just a lot here that I can get into, but I can't because I'm trying to keep this video short. And I'm already five minutes into it, and my phone doesn't want to cooperate right now. I'm just trying to show you a couple of things here. Hold on, bear with me, please. I'm sorry. Okay, so this is wrong. Okay, that's the wrong one. Okay, here we go. So, the Treaty of Fort McIntosh concluded January the 21st, 1785. Now, I'm going to read just a couple of things here. Articles of a treaty concluded. This is, this is the treaty itself. This is not me making up stuff. 
first day of January 1785 between the commissioners of the United States of America in part with the warriors of the Winnado, Delaware, Chippewa, and Ottawa nations of the other, the commissioners plenitentiary of the United States and Congress assembled give peace to these tribes on the following conditions. Now, here, here's the first article. Three chiefs, one from among the Winnedote and two from among the Delaware nations, this is poorly written, shall be delivered up to the commissioners of the United States to by them retained till all the prisoners, white and black, taken by the said Indians or any of them shall be restored. Hold on a second here. Okay. Um, article 2. The said Indian nations do acknowledge themselves and all of their tribes. Now, this is important. The said Indians, Indian nations do acknowledge themselves and all their tribes to be under the protection of the United States and no other sovereign whatsoever. Well, that's not entirely true because that's not exactly what happened. Article 4. The United States, and I'm reading an, ex an excerpt here. I'm not going to read it in its entirety. The United States salute all the lands contained within the said lines of the Winnedon and Delaware nations to live and to hunt on, and to such of the Ottawa nation as now live therein, thereon, excuse me, saving and reserving for the establishment of trading posts six miles square at the mouth of the Miami or Orne River, and the same at the Portage on the branch of the Big Miami, which runs into the Ohio, and the same on the lake of the Sandusky, which the formerly stood, and also two miles on each side of the lower rapids of the Sandusky River. So essentially, these Indian tribes were giving up enormous, and I mean enormous amounts of land that originally was not supposed to be part of that negotiation. I wrote an entire article about this on my Indian website, and I know it's not in publication right now because my site was taken down due to contract disputes that I'm still in the process of renegotiating. But once those are rectified, then I'm going to put everything back up. Everything is going to be updated and everything will be exactly where it's supposed to be. And I'm sure you'll find it much more enjoyable than it was the first time around. I want you to look at these little monuments here because it didn't happen overnight. This was something that you have to place yourself back into the time period. Guys, every time I do an historical video here, I want you to try and think of this in terms of what if this was you standing here 250 years ago? You wouldn't have all these big, beautiful homes you see here, these five, $600,000 homes. It'd be all woods. The fort would be here. The outlook of the Ohio River is here. Woods behind you, woods in front of you, woods to the sides of you. And... If you were a Delaware tribe, or if you were a member of the Turkey clan of the Delaware, if you were a Mingo Indian, whatever, you would look at this and say, there are groups of people here on my land that have no right to be here. And that's kind of what we're doing right now with our you know, immigration system that's just so in disarray and so torn up. You know, We're looking at this and thinking to ourselves, we are projecting that same image. At least I am, too. I don't think these people that are illegal have any right to be here. But if I put myself back 300 years ago, or not even that long, and I see white settlers coming into this land, and I'm a Mingo, or I'm a Delaware, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, who are these people? Why are they here? How, why are they taking my lands? Why are they taking food from my baby's mouths? Why are they thinking that that's an okay thing to do? Guys, I want you to look at this territory. This is sacred ground. This is sacred ground because let me tell you something. This is still Delaware territory. This is still Delaware land. It's sacred. There is blood inside this soil. It's there forever. What you see here, this big, beautiful town of Beaver and all the other towns, wherever you live, whether it's Pittsburgh and Allegheny counties and all those other places, Ontario, up in the north, up in the Northwest Territories, <laughs> First Nations in Canada, everything is bought at a price. Everything was hoodwinked. Everything was negotiated to terms that only benefited white settlers. And I know I sound like a liberal. I know I sound like something that's, you know, I am fully aware that Indians here practice atrocities on one another. And being some of my expertise is right here in the Ohio Valley, I can tell you guys that, you know, Indians were pretty brutal with one another. It's something they don't like to talk about. And for some reason, <laughs> even in today's society, they still... Some of these people who are in politics here and in, 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 in the 
In the Ohio Valley Territory, they, they embrace Democrats and socialism, which baffles me beyond comprehension because the very people that tried to extinguish and eradicate their race are the ones that they support. So just, I, I, don't, I don't understand that, but you have a picture here of this fort. This was the gateway. This is what started for the citizens of Beaver County to come here to take a spot of land and claim it for their own, even though these lands were occupied. It's very difficult to put yourself in that position and say, you know, maybe these things weren't as smooth as everybody talks about. And that's just, that, that's the whole point of this video. It's not. These things aren't mentioned and are not discussed. Our history came at a price. The formation of America came at a price. And ladies and gentlemen, let's not, we don't even have to go outside the box. Let's just stay right here in Beaver County. The formation of Beaver County, right here, what you see, came at an enormous price. Let me show you something. I'm going to get off line here because I'm starting to go over my, my time here. I just want to put something in perspective. You see what I'm walking on right now? This is a hearth. It's a hearth. Okay? It's a hearth that was part of the fort. Keep the soldiers warm. Keep the Indians warm too. Think of the history that was right here. Think of the soldiers that laid their muskets out and their, their, their parts of their uniform and baggage and ate and slept, defended the, the forts. Think of the Indians who came here and negotiated with all the settlers. Maybe Chief Logan was here. Maybe Shingas was here. There's so much history underneath our feet. There are so many stories that will never be written. There, were so, there are so many Indian warriors that were killed whose names will never be written and no books will ever be written about them. There are no songs ever sung of them. We erased and eradicated so much history in the name of all that you see here. And guys, in closing this video, I just want you to understand that history isn't always so normal with markers and, and, and badges and icons and historical plaques. It's much more complicated than that at times because it never gives you the full story. There's always another side of it. There's always, you, you know, it's like the apple analogy. You can just keep turning the apple until you hit the right spot for a better bite. That's the place with history. So we move along here a little bit. The colonial armies move out. The Indians get relocated or they die. They freeze to death. They get slaughtered. In most cases, they were slaughtered. Here's some more hearths. You're looking at history right here. This is all part of the preservation. Sacred ground, guys. Sacred ground. And then it evolves into something else. and involves to another important part of the historical narrative here in Beaver County, which is right here. With those concluding terms and those agreements or disagreements with Indians, you have the expedition of Lewis and Clark, which started in Pittsburgh and made its way right past here. Another whole ideology, another chapter in the history of America. But sometimes a lot of those chapters aren't mentioned and they're not written properly. Today, I want you to look upon this land and I want you to think, wow, there is something here. And there is. In these grounds are more stories than you can imagine. So take a moment, look at this, and try to put yourself in their position. Try to think what you would do. Look around you. This is all Indian territory, all of it. Look at these big, beautiful homes. Nobody's going to give up these big, beautiful homes to a Delaware Indian who comes back here for a dollar. They're not going to sell their home for a dollar. Nobody's going to get rid of their property, right? Nobody's going to get rid of their homes. Guys, it's always at a cost. And it's always at a cost that nobody likes to negotiate about too much. I hope this video has given you a little bit of a different perspective and a much more bloody appreciation for the darker side of our history. Have a good day.